Hello there, welcome to Savannah's Fast Class. I'm Todd, an ERP technical consultant at Savannah's. Today, we're gonna to talk about the basics of using units of measure in Microsoft Business Central. If you're familiar with how units of measure are used in other ERP systems, you will be able to transfer that knowledge to Business Central. In BC, units of measure are utilized in just about all item-related transactions. In this Fast Class, I'll focus on the setup of base and multiple units of measure, entry of default unit of measure for sales and purchasing, and a few other related topics. So let's get started. And if you have questions, drop them in the chat and we'll get them answered for you. Setting up units of measure is pretty simple. You can set up multiple units of measure and assign them to the base unit of measure on the item card and also assign them to purchasing and sales transactions. For example, you may purchase items in a case of 12, but sell them as single items. To add a base unit of measure, third unit of measure, click new. And in this case, I'm gonna set up a couple different ones. I'm gonna add in each. And I'm gonna add a new one called case 12. When I add these, I'll use CS for case because CA was already used for CAN as a unit of measure. So take a little time before you set up your unit to measure and think about how you're gonna label all of them before you add them. To add multiple item units of measure, search for items. Select the item for which you wanna add the unit of measure. Set the default, in this case, the default is set to each. And if I go to related item, units of measure, I can add additional units of measure. In this case, you can see I added case 12 as a unit of measure and the quantity per unit of measure is 12. Also at the bottom of the window is quantity rounding precision. This allows you to specify a rounding precision for base units of measure and help reduce rounding issues. When using alternate units of measure, the value and the quantity per unit of measure field helps calculate the quantity in the base unit of measure, which can lead to rounding issues. For example, imagine you received one box that contains six items. When the box arrives in your warehouse, you discover that one of the six items is missing or damaged. You decide not to post the receipt of one box or one case but instead change the quantity to receive from to five of six pieces. This would lead to a receipt of 4.9998 pieces rather than five. On the item units of measure page, the quantity rounding precision field lets you specify a value that will convert the quantity to a number that makes more sense and is easier to understand. Continuing with the example, you would enter one in the field to round up to an even five pieces. Also make sure your rounding precision makes sense. If you're selling in each item like we're using here, the rounding should always be zero because a unit of measure of each implies that the item can't be broken in half or in pieces and sold as multiple items. I see a lot of setups where the decimal places for the item don't correspond with the unit of measure for the item. It's just something to watch for when you're setting this up. There's optional fields in this grid of height, width, length, and weight that can also be filled out if needed. To enter the default unit of measure code for sales and purchasing transactions, search for items if you're not already in one, like we are here, and select the item you would like to set the default for. In the prices and sales selection, add the sales unit of measure, and in this case, case I'm gonna pick each. And in the replenishment section, I'm gonna pick case 12. What these settings will accomplish is that the default purchasing unit of measure will automatically populate on the purchase order. You can still purchase in each if needed, but the default will be that you're gonna buy these things in cases. When you receive the case of 12, the system will receive the case, but the quantity added to inventory will be 12 each. In the sales order, the quantity you're selling will default to each. Again, you can sell a case if you like to, but if you sell a case, the quantity removed from inventory will be 12 each. 
Your inventory will stay the same no matter which purchasing unit or sales unit of measure you use for the transaction. Units of measure are pretty easy to learn. Try a few on your own and enter a purchase order in one unit of measure and a sales order in another to get a feel for how this works. That's everything for today's class. Thanks so much for joining us.